There is nothing that connects a person to Allah like that time. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that He descends at that time in a way that befits Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. A person has not told the truth. They have lied when they claim to love me. But when the night comes, he sleeps on my appointment. He sleeps when I come down to meet him, when, I, when I'm ready to listen to that person, ready to listen to him or her. And you say you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, isn't it that every lover spends some time with their lover? And he says, here I am looking out to my servants when the night comes, looking out to my lovers, those that love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he says, and tomorrow when they come to me, then I will satisfy their eyes. I will cool their eyes. I will fill their hearts with my Jannah. Those same people that I love. You want to be from those who really love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? That's that only time. No distractions. 15 minutes, 10 minutes, something small. And the greatest thing you can ask, if a person tastes the sweetness of certain voluntary deeds, not only can it help them be more consistent with the obligatory deeds, it can help revive the spirit of those obligatory deeds. In fact, which is what Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha said about Surah Al-Muzzammil. If you read Surah Al-Muzzammil, the third revelation to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it is a page and a half. The second half is one ayah, is one ayah. And Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha says that Allah withheld the second part of Al-Muzzammil for an entire year from us. Meaning what? When Allah first revealed to us, Ya ayyuha al-Muzzammil, qum al-layla illa qalila, nisfahu aw inqus minhu qalila, aw zid alayhi wa rattil al-Qur'an tartila. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to the Prophet sallallahu and to the ummah by extension to stand up and pray at night to stand up and pray a significant portion of the night and to recite a significant portion of what was revealed. Aisha radiallahu anha said, for a year, the obligation upon us was Qiyamul Layl. Meaning Qiyamul Layl, the night prayer was an obligation on the ummah for an entire year before the obligation of the five prayers came later on. Similar to how we have ayyam and ma'dudat, some days that were, obligate, that, that were obligatory for fasting. But when Ramadan came, they became voluntary, like the fasting of Arafah and Ashura and other days like that. Okay, so with the prayer of Qiyam al -Layl, she says that for a whole year, and this was the most difficult time in the life of the Prophet ﷺ and by the Ummah who was facing persecution and had no community, which is one of the wisdoms that the ulama mentioned. They didn't have a community to gather. They, they had no masjid. They had Dar al-Arqam to sneak into and to study and to do what they could. But everyone really had to pray by themselves. For a whole year, she said, we all prayed until our feet would swell. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the second part of it, which rendered the night prayer voluntary. But the Prophet ﷺ still maintained the habits. Meaning the Prophet ﷺ still would pray until his feet would swell. And of course, many of the companions would maintain that habit. And there was a wisdom to that. That when you are struggling, this practice is not just a means of giving you great perspective and great connection to your Lord, but it also provides a unique level of relief, of hem, of stress and anxiety. And that's something that's very unique about this particular habit, this particular good deed when you read about it, the way that the companions and the Salaf and the pious predecessors speak about this act in particular as being one that removes stress. You stand up at night, you have a direct connection to your Lord. It's quiet. You don't have a meeting coming up, right? You, 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 can, you can create the scene, set the scene. The kids are most likely sleeping. They should be sleeping at that time. It's just you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The, the rules of Qiyam layl are not as uh, rigid. And I don't say that in a negative way, but with the, the maktubah, with the, with the mandatory prayers, there are certain things you can and can't do, but with the Qiyam, you can spend the whole night with one or two ayat. You can allocate certain time to your sajda, certain time to your standing up. It's a moment of joy. And when the scholars spoke about it, that's what they say. And it's very interesting because just like with fasting, you know, you always start reading about these studies to try to make you feel better about your faith. And you don't need to, right? The benefits of fasting. It just, it, it, it feels good, right? When you hear about the physical benefits and things of that sort as well. Basically, these studies confirming what you already have been acting upon because it was prescribed by your Lord. And so you read these studies about mindfulness meditation. 20 minutes a day, 20, 25 minutes a day, but don't do it all at one time. 
because you need to break up your mindfulness meditation throughout the day because it will reset the cycle for you and get you back to where you need to be and put, put you know, between those breaks, those meditation breaks, everything in perspective and it will improve the quality of your sleep. And if you improve the quality of your sleep, then you're energized during the day. And I'm like, these people just need Salah. <laughs> they just need prayer. We already know, we have something prescribed to us that is so beautiful. That doesn't mean that times of dua and dhikr and introspection are not good as well, but salah really offers that vehicle and improves the quality of a person's day and a person's night. And we, when you think about the unique stress relief, Abu Sulaiman al-Dawani rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, you know, people spend the entire night binge watching movies or, uh, you know, hanging out. And there are halal ways to spend time as well, right? But you know, there is a certain relaxation. I need some relief tonight, so I'm gonna spend some time and I'm going to just, you know, kill some time and feel good. And sometimes if it's halal, it's good for you. But what he was saying is that people who have established this night prayer, even if it's a small portion, that they are in more joy than the people of Lahu with their Lahu. Now we're not even talking about people of sin, right? That's a whole nother level. And he said, it's as if I could see my heart laughing when a person enjoys that night of prayer. That had it not been for Qiyam al I really wouldn't see any use in living in this life. I, I don't think about anything in life as giving me as much joy as I do Qiyam al-Layl. Thabit al-Bunani radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he used to say, I have not found anything in my life that is just sweeter, gives more pleasure. That's how they're speaking about it. Then Qiyam al-Layl, al-Fudayl rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, he said that I love the night prayer, or I love the night because that's when I get to meet my Lord. That's when I get to spend time with Allah. And we were talking about the last few weeks, how people can be exhausting. He said, in the daytime, I'm not so crazy about because I have to meet the creation of Allah. Dealing with the Lord at night, dealing with people during the day, there is a peace and a tranquility that comes from that, that makes what comes throughout the day more bearable. And that joy is freshening. That joy is replenishing. That joy is meaningful. It's, you know, people are searching for it here and there. And it's in those few moments at night. And I'm gonna to get to this at the end, but that doesn't mean praying all night. That means those few moments, that 10, 15 minutes, that 20 minutes of recalibrating every single night, at some point in the night, between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Imam Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah ta'ala said, how come the people that sleep the least at night have the freshest faces during the day. It's as if they're, they're energized. SubhanAllah. He said, because they spent the night in seclusion with the most merciful. So Allah dressed them with His light. Sa'id ibn Musayyib rahimahullah ta'ala, he said to them that a person spends the night praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in seclusion with their Lord. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them nur, gives them light, gives them something that would, that, that would connect them with every single Muslim. To the point, when you talk about, when we love each other for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you see a brother, you see someone in the masjid, brother seeing brother, sister seeing sister, and right away you love that person. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you know, there's a sakina, there's a tranquility that is coming from that person. A person would see that person for the first time. He would say, you know, I really love that man for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I don't know that person, but I love them for Allah. Something is being emitted from that person. And that is that time that they're spending with their Lord at night. One of the things that the scholars also mention particularly about this is that during the day, the challenge of Salah is that you're thinking about what comes next. The greatest distraction, and that's how you treat the nafs is that you learn what it is that ails it. Most people get distracted in their prayer, as Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah said, by the appointments of what comes next. So you're in Salah, but you're, you're planning your next step, your next, you know, I got to go do this at 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, you're going here, you're going there. Your mind is racing ahead of the Salah. Most people, that's what catches them and distracts them. And you, you indeed have appointments. You might have to squeeze in your prayer time. Some of you right now are still at work, thinking about your next thing. It's, it's natural, right? That's your struggle. But SubhanAllah, what they say about Qiyam al-Layl is that it's a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because you're not missing appointments. You're not distracted by this immediate need that you have next. It's at the quietest time of your existence. And the only thing that you're giving up is sleep. There's a very beautiful 
example that was given by a tabi'i by the name of Shurayh ibn Hani, rahimahullah ta'ala, he likened it to physical exercise. You know, when you physically exercise, initially there is an exhaustion of the body. But then, you realize that you're exhausting the body for the sake of what? The body. You're exhausting the body for the sake of the body. And so he said, when you give up sleep, you realize at some point that your sleep is actually filled with more blessing, has more barakah in it. That 15 minutes or 20 minutes that you compromise is not going to make you a groggy person throughout the day. It's not going to mess things up for you. The sleep has more blessing in it, and what you gain from that time in Qiyamul Layl makes the sleep the easiest thing to give up in this dunya. You're not giving up appointments. You're not thinking about, I got this in 10 minutes. Hopefully you're not checking WhatsApp at 3 a.m. or whatever it is, or 4 a.m. You have time. You can pause. You can focus. It's quiet. And the day has not yet started. And that's wisdom from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So whether it's in the beginning of the night, when other people are going to sleep, or the end of the night, when most people are still asleep, you can dedicate and allocate that time. And this is where we find this idea of what it means to have qurb, closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Dear brothers and sisters, aim high. If you seek to be an average Muslim, you know, and, and that's why I, I, I despise it when people self-label, say, I'm a non-practicing Muslim. You've basically sealed your salah. <laughs> I'm a non-practicing Muslim, I don't pray five. That's what it means, I don't pray five times a day. Aim high. If you seek to be an average Muslim, you're gonna be a very deficient Muslim. If you seek to be a person of taqwa, then maybe you'll fall short and you'll sin sometimes. But if you seek to be a person of ihsan, seek to be a person of excellence, there's one way there, and that's a personal connection with Allah. Ihsan does not come except through personalizing that connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's where you find the Salaf say, the pious predecessors say, nothing establishes that connection like Qiyam. It's too busy throughout the day, too much going on. There is nothing that connects a person to Allah like that time. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that He descends at that time in a way that befits Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's calling out to you. And He's saying, who wants to come close to me? Who has an appointment? Allah has all the time for you. Allah does not take slots. It's not restricted for some religious people somewhere in the world. No, the broken, the sinner, the, the, the righteous, the person who's trying to be righteous, everyone calling upon Allah. That time of the night, that's your time to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Hassan, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, there is nothing, there is nothing. He said to a, a, a person who asked him, what is it that brings a person closest to Allah? He said, nothing brings you closer to Allah than Qiyamul Layl. al fulayl rahimahullah ta'ala, he also one time, uh, he grabbed the shoulder of a man and he said to him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes down every single night to the lowest heaven. And so the Lord says, a person has not told the truth. They have lied when they claim to love me. But when the night comes, he sleeps on my appointments. He sleeps when I come down to meet him, when I speak, when, when, I'm, when I'm ready to listen to that person, ready to listen to him or her. And you say you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, isn't it that every lover spends some time with their lover? And he says, here I am looking out to my servants when the night comes, looking out to my lovers, those that love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he says, and tomorrow when they come to me, then I will satisfy their eyes, I will cool their eyes, I will fill their hearts with my Jannah. Those same people that I love. You want to be from those who really love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? That's that only time, no distractions. 15 minutes, 10 minutes, something small. And the greatest thing you can ask at that time is forgiveness. That's the greatest thing. What am I going to ask Allah? Forgiveness. The greatest causer of stress is your sins because that's what puts the barrier between you and Allah. And that's why that idea is always at the forefront of any discussion on tahajjud, any discussion on the night prayer from the Quran and from the Sunnah. In those last moments of the night, they're seeking forgiveness from Allah. The last 10 nights of Ramadan, Allahumma innaka afuwun tuhibbul afu fa'fu anni. You're asking Allah for forgiveness. Is there anyone that's seeking forgiveness so that I can forgive that person? As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the angels, as he sees that slave of his standing up at night, يَقُولُ لِلْمَلَائِكَ أُنْظُرُوا مَاذَا يَطْلُبُ عَبْدِي Go see what he's asking. Go see what she's asking me for. فَيَقُولُ الْمَلَائِكَ أَيْ رَبِّي بِضَاكَ وَمَغْفِرَتَكَ Oh my Lord, they're asking for your pleasure and for your forgiveness. 
فَيَقُولُ اللَّهُ أُشْهِدُكُمْ Allah says to the angels, Bear witness, O my angels, أَنِّي قَدْ غَفَرْتُ لَهُ وَرَضِيتُ عَنْهُ That I have indeed been become pleased with that person and forgiven that person. That's your time to get close to Allah and ask Allah for sins. That sin that's wearing you down, that sin that's bearing on your conscience, it's sins that prevent qiyam, and it's qiyam that prevents sin. <laughs> so you got to take that first step of walking away from that sin, and that step forward is going to be at the night prayer. And that's where you say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, I'm sorry. When everything's quiet, when it's just me and you, I'm sorry, Ya Allah, and I'm seeking your forgiveness. Is don't belittle the small amounts of qiyam. Beginning of the night, end of the night, middle of the night, two rakahs. Don't belittle it. It matters. And that's why the Prophet said in the authentic hadith, whoever stands up and just reads 10 ayat, 10 verses, will not be written as a person of heedlessness. Heedlessness means you have a barrier. You don't perceive God properly. You don't understand your purpose properly. If you're standing up and praying just with 10 verses, reading two, two short surahs, and whoever stands up and recites a hundred ayat, then they are written from the exceedingly devout, the pious. And whoever stands up and recites a thousand verses, which by the way, if you want to do it once in your lifetime, the last two juz of the Qur'an is a thousand verses, then they will be written amongst those who are piling up good deeds, who have gone far ahead of everybody else with their good deeds. Sometimes it takes that example. Sometimes it takes reminding yourself that the small thing counts while you're aiming to get better, while you're aiming for the bigger thing. So that you don't think of Qiyam al as some sort of habit that's just reserved for this exclusive group of people. No, it's not. It's for the Muslims. It's for those who want to stand up and pray, those who want to enjoy that connection with Allah, seeking first and foremost His pleasure and His forgiveness. And that's why Ibn Umar, radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, Abdullah ibn Umar, uh, in a narration from Abu Ghalib, he says that Abdullah ibn Umar used to come upon us in Mecca. He used to pray at night, long prayers in the night. So one night he said to me, right when Fajr was about to come in, he said, won't you stand up and pray, even if you're going to read just a third of the Qur'an? I said, what do you mean a third of the Qur'an? You know, Fajr is almost around the corner. So I said to him, Ya Aba Abdul Rahman, Fajr is right around the corner. What do you mean? How am I going to read a third of the Qur'an? That's maybe something that, you know, you guys do. <laughs> we don't do a third of the Qur'an. So he responded in the Surah Al-Ikhlas, Qul huwa Allah ahad. Qul huwa Allah ahad is equal to one third of the Qur'an. Who would not want to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, every night I used to read a third of the Qur'an, right before Fajr. So dear brothers and sisters, I know it seems like a distant habit, one for the exceedingly pious, but it's a way to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that cannot be replaced by any other way. And inshallah ta'ala, those who are struggling with their five prayers to pray them on time, this will only help it bi'ithnillahi ta'ala. It's not in place of it. It's a means of connecting yourself to the Lord that you call upon day and night. We call upon Him for forgiveness and for salvation.